He's also just come out of the water to see what was happening. I think that hippo is now on its way back and said, I've had enough of this nonsense and that was not PG rated what was going on. So I'm going to go back to the water where it's a lot more peaceful. Not after one last look at the camera. <laughs> not really going anyway quickly, is it? Oh no, I think the hippo heard me laughing at it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at you at the way that you were walking. I suppose it's a Sunday go slow today, isn't it? Now, I, this is a, what's actually amazing is the fact that this hippo is just, I don't even know what, you, podding along, but they can move so quickly when they want to. Those legs move, you know, straight forward past one another. You're flicking your toes out. You're a very fancy hippopotamus, aren't you? <laughs> You know what it reminds me of? It's um, it's like it's a hippo doing dressage. Maybe it will do some flying changes for us. What else are you going to maybe do? No, you're just going to keep walking, flicking your toes. And I am keeping an eye out on our impala ram, but he's not doing anything at the moment. He's just looking around him. It's so cool to see these animals out of the water all the time. I really have missed it. I always used to tell you how I, I can't wait to see these these guys out in the water and, and during the day, you know, at night they're a little bit on the nervous side. But when they can see you, like this one can see me now and we're parked quite a distance away giving it enough space, I'm very happy to just carry on with its day outside the water. Ah, yeah. oh, Lara Moore, you said that they just walk so precisely. I suppose it's because their legs can't really go in any other direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're on a tightrope and they're only allowed to move um, sort of back and forth and that's it, you know, you can't really shake them out to the side and that's what's so funny when they run is basically it's the equivalent, I can't even get out and demonstrate to you because it's always better when we do a demonstration, isn't it? Um, and maybe, maybe when in an area I'll be a bit naughty when there's also no hippos around, preferably, and I'll demonstrate what it reminds me of when they run. Are you going to climb the termite mound? Are you going to use it as a vantage point? No. You're going to use it for a bit of cover, aren't you? There must be an animal pathway down there. Let's see if it carries on and heads back down to the Mara River. Don't worry, we're not going to harm you, and I'm not even going to start the car because I know that it's going to bother you, hippopotamus, and I do not want to get on your bad side. From this distance, it's a bit difficult to tell if it's a male or a female. Uh, I mean, it could be either way at the moment. Could be a young male, could be a big female. Not too comfortable with us though, you know, just keeping an eye on us. Which I suppose is the right thing to do, because that's what we would do if we were out here walking around. I'd be keeping my eye on the hippo. <laughs> oh man, you said the hippo is saying, are you laughing at me again? Probably is thinking exactly that and maybe it's heard stories about me laughing at the animals and probably had enough this one laughing at us. There's obviously a pod of hippos down there. No, I didn't do it. You're wondering if lions would ever go for a hippo outside of the water? Most certainly. They definitely would, and I think the lions out here take down hippo every now and then, especially the, the bigger coalitions of males and the bigger prides. You know, one lion versus a fully grown hippo will be difficult, if not impossible, unless it was severely injured and on its deathbed. But otherwise, a hippo would um, probably do quite a bit of damage to a lion. Do you remember that video that was circulating, around, uh, circulating on the interweb recently where lioness just walked up to a hippo that was sleeping and then bit it on the bottom and the hippo turned up and then bit the lion. <laughs> I thought that was quite a funny video. The lion was very lucky to get away unscathed because that could have gone horribly wrong. But I, just the whole situation was hysterical. I thought, a lion, what on earth are you doing? Obviously didn't realize that it was alive. And I think if it knew that it was alive, it probably would have left it alone. I thought we'd just take a chance. So there we go, it just shows you opportunistic feeders. Let me just see if I bite its bottom if it will get it to move. There's a little bird on its back now, too. Now, Christina, 
a question. You're wondering if there's any truth behind hippos being uh, one of the most dangerous animals to humans. Most certainly, they kill more people than the big five put together. Can you believe that? So, um, so yes, there are. Uh, most of the uh, casualties occur. Um, Hippo, why you don't be ugly to us? We're just sitting here watching you. And um, so most of them happen in the rivers. I think mean, the Zambezi is. I mean, I can't tell you how many times a week we were told that while I was working there that someone was either eaten by a crocodile or killed by a hippopotamus. It, it was almost not an uncommon thing. It was very sad. Uh, again, it, it happens in areas, uh, rural areas, where there's people are still using the river to bathe, to wash their pots and pans and clothes. And normally if they're traveling via mokoros or, you know, flimsy canoe type things, not a proper boat, then, uh, then yes, uh, unfortunately, they'll get into a bit of trouble. And then the other is getting in between hippo and water is never a, a good idea. So be careful of those two things. Uh, I actually watched a video last night. I can't remember where I watched it. Was maybe it was shared on a group or something where there was a guys on a Macora going through a channel. It looked like it was maybe Botswana or something. Uh, there was a lot of water hyacinth, uh, which is an invasive species of plant that grows all over Africa, unfortunately. It comes from South America and it takes over the little channels. And they were just sort of um, meandering through, and the next minute they spotted this massive crocodile that must have been in excess of five meters. And this croc came swimming past and actually splashed water, and will obviously try to propel with its tail, and looked like it almost knocked uh, the guys out of the Macora. So you have to be so careful. And crocodiles will leap out of water, I'm sure that you've seen the various videos of when people feed crocodiles and I'm not I'm not all for feeding wild animals and they launch themselves out of the water uh, almost completely vertical so that that petrifies me um, and to go in something that's only a couple of centimeters above the water oh my goodness no thank you I'm okay now, Rishi, uh, seeing that we're looking at this hippo outside the water, the question from you is how long, what is the longest that a hippo can stay out of the water? I suppose they don't want to be out of the water for too long because they're so sensitive to the sun. Um, but early in the mornings, it's no problem. Uh, the longest, I don't know what the longest would be, and it, that would depend on how far it's having to travel to find food. So if you find that it's a drought, and I mean, I've heard of stories of hippos traveling, you know, 50, 60 kilometers trying to find new water because all the rivers and all the dams and pans have dried up and there's no food around, then they'll just have to keep walking and walking and walking and hoping that they find new sources. So I. I'm sure they could go a couple of days, say, without uh, being uh, submerged in water or mud. And then after that, I think they're going to be very weak because if they don't have water around, there's probably not a lot of food around either. And then you'll find that they'll be might be so weak that a pride of lions or something could come around and, and take them out. Uh, so, yeah, so they can move uh, huge distances over land, except they're not equipped for it like an elephant with thick, tough skin. Uh, very sensitive to the sun again. They need that water to help keep them cool. But very cool. Nice to see this hippo. Oh, chitty chatty Meg, hello. Uh, wondering how tall is the hippopotamus? Oh, I've never stood next to one, but I'm going to say shoulder height, I'm guessing. Now we'll have to check in the book. I'm going to say between 1.3 and 1.5 meters. I would say that is the height of a hippopotamus at its shoulder. So they're not small creatures. And then lengthwise, two and a half meters two and checking between two and two and a half meters it's a, it's a big animal <laughs> especially when you see a big bull out of the water and and walking right past your car then you really realize how big they are especially when the hippo is longer than the width of your car that's when you know uh, right, but we'll let this hippo carry on with its day and I'll pile around a dot mate with any females. How disappointing, but at least we were correct in that. Tristan is still sitting with a very sleepy tumba on a very windy day. I wonder if he will wake up. Yeah. Ah, so... Sorry guys, I don't know why I could not hear anything. We were driving around and we were discussing Vuitella Camp and, and Gallego and 